everyone and welcome back to my youtube channel so in today's video i'm going to be sharing with you guys my birth story if you are new here on my channel i was born and raised in the netherlands and i moved to turkey about seven years ago so this is my birth story and also a little bit about giving birth in turkey so if you are curious about how it's going here in turkey or just you want to hear my birth story then uh, please keep on watching and don't forget to give the huge thumbs up because you really have my channel with that and don't forget to subscribe and now let's get started with the video so i will try to keep this story as short as possible and i will first explain a little bit about how it's going here in turkey so in turkey you can go to the regular government hospital and you have also private hospitals which the uh sejk sejk that's the um health insurance here in turkey they will cover um a part of that if you go to a private hospital and i believe Leave, but I'm not entirely sure that the government hospitals are free but um, the experience is quite different so lots of my friends and family members from my husband went to this doctor and he works at a, a private hospital and um, in Turkey doctors prefer mostly to do a c-section you have a choice here in Turkey lots of women they uh, prefer a c-section um, which is completely different in the Netherlands like in the Netherlands women mostly want a natural birth and because I really wanted a natural birth I went uh, to the doctor in the private hospital so that's something to keep in mind if you are giving birth in Turkey that um, yeah do your research and um, check what your doctor prefers I had very regular checkups in the hospital um, the last couple of weeks they put me regular on the CTG scan um, they did a lot of blood work um, also they found out that I had gestational diabetes so I got a um, special diet for that so I found that the checkups and everything were like great and another thing to keep in mind when you give birth in Turkey is that in most of the hospitals the husband is not allowed to be in the delivery room and um, you have to do it on your own and unfortunately my husband also couldn't be there uh, although I choose for a private hospital still he was not allowed in so um, yeah, I will come to that in my birth story but um, yeah th those are a few things that you have to keep in mind and um, if you have any questions feel free to DM me on Instagram or leave a comment down below so I will share with you now my birth story so my due date was 10 October 2022 and I was one day overdue yeah 11 October I went uh, for a checkup so he measured the baby and the baby measured quite big and he said if I wanted a natural birth that I needed to be induced otherwise it would be a c-section and I was kind of in shock because I really wanted a, a medical and natural birth and I was like oh gosh this is kind of scary and um, after that they put me on the CTG scan and it was just the funniest thing because my friend was there as well if you follow my vlogs you know that uh, we did a whole maternity photo shoot together and um, she has a little girl now who is one month younger than Axel uh, but yes she was there as well so we laid there together on the CTG scan and uh, the doctor told me that I already had contractions but I didn't feel thing yet the only thing I had was like lower back pain and I was just not sleeping very well anymore at night I was also very tired like I took lots of naps but in the night I just couldn't sleep anymore and the doctor told me to come back that evening uh, to check again my contractions and um, if I was maybe already dilated so that day I was just running around the house like I was cleaning like a crazy person um, getting the nursery all done although it was already done but I was just like I need to keep moving I want to have a natural birth so I just need to make sure that the baby is like dilating and that I'm getting regular contractions so yeah I was just going crazy that day that evening before we went to the hospital my husband and I were walking around in the mall and I asked my husband to take a last picture because I already had a feeling maybe it could start so I was like can you take one last picture you know from the bump uh, I will insert it here and um, yeah I was just very very tired and I was just very ready to become a mom and to give birth um, I wasn't really nervous 
um, I was like I was like kind of ready for it so then we went to the hospital and again they put me on the CTG scan and uh, my contractions were more regular and again I didn't feel anything yet and they also did a checkup if I was dilated and I believe I was already like one centimeter dilated not a lot but he was definitely coming so that was all very positive and um, the midwife talked with the doctor and they said I had to come back that morning um, to be induced if nothing happened overnight so I was like okay I just want to get a good night's sleep you know um, and then come back in the morning and then I will be all ready so just when I laid in bed and it was like around 12 o'clock at night um, I was very very tired again and all of a sudden I feel like a balloon popping inside of me and my water broke. It was just the weirdest feeling, like it was like bloop. You also could hear something and my husband heard it as well and he was like what's that? And I was running to the toilet and the water came down like crazy. The good thing is it was all clear. The water was all clear so that was all good. And immediately the contraction started. So my husband was getting all the bags like crazy and we were running to the car, lots of towels because like I said the water was like, it was like a waterfall. Like I didn't expect that. I was like if your water broke you know it's, it's like streaming down a little bit but no it was like crazy much. So we rushed over to the hospital and my contractions already started in the car, very regular and my battery just died which is great. But um, yes, yeah, so we rushed over to the hospital and when we arrived at the hospital a nurse uh, came to me with a wheelchair and like rushed us uh, through the CTG scan. So when I was on the CTG scan uh, the midwife came to me who was with me all night and she was just so sweet and um, she checked and yes I definitely had regular contractions and she also checked if I was dilated and by that point I was like two centimeter dilated something like that and she said I'm going to give you guys a room in the beginning the contractions were like doable like I could be breathe through them I did lots of breathing exercises while I was pregnant so I was just trying to breathe through them I asked the midwife if I could also shower and she said that was totally fine so I did that also for a while and the hot water kind of helped but while the contractions were um, getting stronger it was more difficult definitely to breathe through them I was just hanging on my husband and I was throwing up while the pain became stronger still I didn't want the epidural or anything I don't know a epidural really scares me um, that you don't feel anything anymore and I just I just was like no I want to do this all natural and I'm going to breathe through them it's not that long anymore any midwife came in regularly to check how far I was dilated um, when they checked how far I was dilated I needed to go to the delivery room which was a different room um, and my husband was not allowed in so that's also something very different um, so that's something that was like a little bit hard because you are having contractions and you always need to move to another room that's something that I found very strange um, but yes I was trying to keep moving you know in my room keep walking around um, laying down was make it worse like the pain was not doable when I laid down I was just always walking and moving my hips and like standing under the shower and all of that and um, yeah, I'm not gonna lie it is very hard like very very painful the last couple of centimeters I was like I don't know how long I can keep going like this like I felt like I was just the pain was not doable anymore and I was like maybe I need an epidural but thank goodness the baby was almost there already so in the morning and it was like half past seven something like that and I had a very strong urge to push and she told me that I immediately needed to call her if I had that feeling and I told my husband like oh my god I really feel like I need to push now like I think he's almost here and my husband called the midwife like yes yes he's coming he's coming so we brushed over to the delivery room and that was absolutely the hardest part and um, because my husband needed to wait outside and like I said that's something just you want to share together you know the birth of your child and just leaving him outside and I guess for him as well like seeing his wife going in there alone is just 
really hard and just before the doors closed from the delivery room um, I had a contraction and I was like screaming my husband he was like standing there like really helpless because you know I was going in there and he was there but when I was in the delivery room the midwife checked how far I was dilated and yes I was um, 10 centimeters dilated so I was ready to push she called the um, doctor and he rushed over so I was trying to do my breathing exercises to breathe the baby out but the doctor said no you don't need to breathe when you're pushing you need to hold your breath and that's something that I didn't practice like I always practiced to breathe through them and he was like no you have to hold your breath and push as hard as you can so that's what I was trying to do in the Netherlands you can choose in which position you want to push um, in Turkey again you don't have any choice you just need to lay on your back um, which is of course not a natural position to push a baby out so the midwife was there my doctor and I believe one other woman but I'm really not sure anymore <laughs> Um, they told me to push as hard as I could so I pushed and pushed and they checked the baby's heart rate and the heart rate was going down and that really really scared me he said yeah your baby's in distress and we need to get your baby out as soon as possible you need to push as hard as you can when you're giving birth you have like a superpower I don't know how to describe it but you feel like this strong power to push your baby out and like to protect your baby and I was like okay you need to come out now and he told me I need to help you with a vacuum uh, pump because the baby was in distress the heart rate was going down and he was not coming out fast enough so it was a vacuum delivery in the end and that was a really strange feeling like it burned and it was such an intense feeling very very painful and he said okay I'm going to help you now you need to push as hard as you can the midwife was pressing on my belly that was very painful as well so the doctor was ready with the vacuum pump the midwife was pressing on my belly and I was trying to push as hard as I could and then around 8 o'clock in the morning or baby boy Axel was born when Axel was born they put him on my chest and I was like oh is he okay is he okay and he started to cry so that was a very good sign and I was just happy that he was all healthy you know and uh, that everything went well because it was kind of a st scary moment you know when you hear your baby's heart rate is going down you're like oh my god um, but thank goodness he was all fine um, but unfortunately because it was a vacuum delivery he um, had and still has a um, problem with his head I will put it here on the screen but long story short because they use a vacuum pump lots of babies have like a bump on their head but like the doctor told me it's like Axel's body wanted to um, heal that so his skull uh, hardened and he still has like a very big bump on his head it's basically like his skull is stretched um, I don't know I will put it here on the screen and that is something that was really scary because first I didn't see that because he has lots of hair and when we did him in bath the first time I was like oh my god his old school you know his bump is like huge like it was so scary and after that we also went to a specialist a neurosurgeon um, who had a look and it was all just very scary because they told us maybe he needs surgery you know that's not something that you want to hear when you just have a newborn and you just want to enjoy that time and then you hear yeah your baby maybe needs surgery uh, because there's something wrong and that was all you know very scary but the neurosurgeon told us that it will all be fine maybe he will keep this bump on his head maybe it will never disappear but um, it's not dangerous and that's the most important thing obviously so um, we're very glad about that but yes after the birth um, they cleaned Axel all up and I was laying there um, waiting for that and then after that um, they put me in a wheelchair and they rolled me out of the delivery room with my baby in my arms and when the doors opened my husband was waiting there for me with like tears in his eyes and I immediately started to cry as well and we both cried and the nurses were like yes hadi hadi which means like quick quick we bring you to your room so you can be there together in peace and um, 
yes, that was just very like a special moment, you know, that my husband uh, saw Axel as well. We end up staying in the hospital for two, two days, yeah, a little over two days because Axel didn't pee and they were a little bit worried about that. He had also a little bit of a temperature, um, so they just wanted um, to keep us there a little bit longer. And something that I was quite surprised by is the recovery. It was very hard, like I was so dizzy uh, after that, like I could barely walk to the toilet, like the nurses helped me. My ribs were very, very sore and um, that's because of the midwife, you know, who pressed there to get Axel out. My, yeah, my ribs were painful for like two weeks. So something that I definitely underestimated is the recovery. Like, um, yes, it takes quite a while to feel good again, you know, for the pain to go all the way. Overall, I'm okay with how it went. I mean, I will do it again in a heartbeat. Um, would I change things? If I could, yes, of course, I would like my husband to be there. Um, I wish they didn't use a vacuum pump because of Axel's head right now. I'm obviously happy that he's healthy and like that's the most important thing. I mean, you can change something. If he needs to come out quick, he needs to come out quick. And um, I'm only thankful, you know, that they have equipment like that. So my birth was like eight hours, which is also quite all right, I think. And it was unmedical, which I really wanted. And again, if you have a C-section or, um, or pain medication, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, obviously. But that just really scared me. So I'm happy that it was unmedical. So this was my birth story and yeah, I really hope you guys um, enjoyed this video and um, if you watched till the end, um, thank you for watching. Don't forget to give it a huge thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe. And I hope to see you guys very soon in one of my other videos. Bye!